He's our hope and our confidence. But what we saw was truly God was not people's hope and confidence. The worldly system was. And I believe COVID, that time, was kind of a pre-trial to what's coming. And it was God's mercy to, for us to see what's really in our hearts. No condemnation at all. But like, okay, do I really believe what I say? Or is it just a high value, not a core value? We have lots of high values. God is good. God's my provider. God's my healer. But until you go through something, you really see what is a core value. And it's the mercy of God to see what's in our heart because when we see what's in our heart and if we don't like it, we get to change. There is grace. Okay, I thought I had faith. And this takes, to, this means that we have to be real. Like that Christian thing, that, that religious thing has to go out the door and be like, okay, God, I did good, but I could do better. Or God, I failed. I need you. Show me how to be deeply rooted. That's what we get to experience with the Lord. God provides all these things. Okay, so two things. They say when you're teaching, you should only give one point. But I think we're really smart, and I have two. <laughs> and, and I can't come teach next week. Well, I could if I, if I asked him. But. Okay, so two things. We can do this, right? Because these two things are so important. I think two things that keep us from being deeply rooted in the Lord. And I, I'm sure, Nick, you could come up with more, but I'm going to give two. I'm, I know there's probably more, but I'm going to give two that was in my heart. <laughs> two things. One, not understanding God's love for us and that we've been made the righteousness of God. Because when we don't know, we all know here, God loves us. I mean, we were taught as kids, if you went to school, church, but here, God truly, truly loves me and has the best for me. And I am the righteousness of God. I cannot be more righteous. Okay, in my soul, I can, but not in my spirit. In my spirit, I can't be more righteous, and that's what God looks at. Those, if we do not understand that, our relationship with God, we automatically push God far away because he's not safe, maybe here, but not in our heart. We subconsciously keep a distance because there's shame and condemnation that puts up this wall. And you're like, I love God. I just don't ever feel him. I just feel like he never speaks to me. And this is because we truly, truly don't know how much he loves us. And once you encounter God's love, when things come, you don't blame God. When hardships come, you know you have the creator of the universe that has your back that won't allow you to be touched. You just know. You just know he's for you. Amen. And that's an encounter you have to have with God. Nobody can give that to you. But you can get that with God. You and God, God solidify that I know that you love me. And if there's any area of my heart, I pray this all the time, if there's any deep corners of my heart, anything in me that is subconsciously pushing you away, show me. Show me. I don't want any barriers because I loved what Louis said this morning. Where is Louis? He did everything he needed to do to be close to us. I'm going to say this. I shouldn't, but there's a movie. I don't condone this movie, but there's one part I loved in this movie, and there was a few parts, but there's actually, it's not a very clean movie. My kids don't see it, but Vid Angel. If you don't have Vid Angel, you can watch almost any movie you like on Vid Angel, but the movie Hitch, there's a movie Hitch. Okay. And he said, you know, when you do the first kiss, you go 90% and then see if she'll go the 10%. Like, go 90%. <laughs> you know, she does 10%. That's what you do to see if she wants to kiss you back. Okay, this is what I feel with God. He went 100%. And he's just waiting if we'll lead in. Not even 90, he's done 100%. It is 100% on our, our part how close we want to be with God. He has done everything. He gave his son. He gave us an, and Isaiah says it was his good pleasure. I mean, it didn't say it was so hard for him. He didn't want to do it, but he did it. 
His good pleasure, I can't even fathom that. I have five kids. It would not be my good pleasure to give up my kid for you. I'm sorry, it wouldn't. I don't understand, but it's because he loved us so much that he would put his own son to be tortured on the cross to have intimacy with us. And we think God doesn't love us? We think God doesn't love us? He loves you so much. He fights for you. He wants you. He wants to be close to you. Not so you can serve him. Do, 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 do. Just be. Just be. He wants to speak to your heart. One word from God could change everything. I know. I know. In the hardest times of my life, I got with God. And I said, I'm not moving till you speak to me. I'm not moving. I need a word. My Bible is full of dates and promises that God has given me. And then once you have a word, you stand. The voice of your father speaks louder than any other voice. If he's saved to you, if you know you're loved. Somehow, when we don't know we're loved, his voice gets distorted. We don't hear it correctly. The enemy takes his word and just makes it into religion and shame and condemnation. It's just not even his language. We don't deeply trust him if we don't know he loves us. And listen, religion will not anchor us in hard times. And this is what I'm talking about. When we don't know God loves us deeply, deeply, it's religion. We're working so hard. We're working so hard to please God. You pleased him. He's so pleased with you. That's what the Bible says because of what Jesus did. So then we get to stop striving and just receive love. And it's amazing because we're actually more productive for the kingdom of God. We actually produce more good fruit. Religion is fear-based relationship with God. Religion is striving to earn righteousness. Religion can look really good on the outside. We can really impress people. Our scriptures... We know what to say, but God sees our heart, and he's not judging us, but he's just like, there's so much more. There's so much more. It could be so real and authentic with God. And when it's religion, we get knocked over with the first storm. We're not rooted. Did you know that a tree can produce some fruit without being rooted? It's fascinating to me, but... It just gets knocked over in the first storm that comes. So it's deceiving. You know, religion is so deceiving because it it makes you feel good, like you're doing something. It's really for us. But inside, you just know there can be more. It's never satisfying. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, I'm reading the New Living Translation. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. When were we saved? When we just simply believed. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Praise God. Because when I got saved, I was doing nothing good. So praise God. I, I could not earn it. I was in the deepest, darkest pit when God pulled me out. So none of us can boast about it. Only God can get um, glory. Romans eleven six, New Living Translation. And since it was through God's kindness, then it was not good works. For in this case, God's grace would not be what it really is, free and undeserving. So when the enemy says, you know, you don't deserve it, oh, I know. Oh, I know I don't deserve it. I know where I was. It's free and it's undeserving. Galatians 5, 4. For if you were trying to make yourself right with God by keeping the law, and this means rules, like give me the rules and I'll keep it. If you are trying to make yourself right with obeying all the rules, and it's not that God's principles are not good. We do need to do it. But when you try to do it on your own effort, this is what it says. You have been cut off from Christ because you have fallen away from God's grace. We cut ourselves off. From Jesus, life, grace, love, hope, when we try to do it in our own effort. We cut ourselves off. We need the grace of God. 
Okay, number two. So number one, we cannot get deeply rooted if we do not understand how loved we are and we are the righteousness of God. It, it, it is foundational. It's foundational. That blocks us. That love blocks our hearts from religion. Number two, we get so busy in this life, God becomes a priority, a lesser priority. It just does not work. God cannot be a part of our life. He has to be our life. It's all or nothing. That's how it is. The old has passed away and the new has come. We like to just do our life and bring God in when it's convenient. And God will take whatever you give him. Don't get me wrong. But we will struggle. It's total surrender. And this is where a lot of people struggle. They don't want to totally surrender. And I believe it's because the number one thing, they don't believe God loves them and has the best for them. So when you have one, the second one becomes really easy because when you feel the love of God, all you want to do is give him more. When you know, I love my husband. My husband loves me so well. Thank you. <laughs> but God, Jesus is my number one. He is. And I know Jesus is his number one. When I'm not happy with him, I get to go to Jesus. And it's not very often. <laughs> but Jesus is my number one. He's my number one. I tasted his love. I've seen what he's done. There's not any part of my life I don't want to give him. But not because I'm good. It's because I encountered God's love. Anybody who encounters God love, God's love, it's like, you know, when you're, when I have just all these secular analogies, but like you're playing poker and you're like, I'm all in. I don't play poker. I don't bet. But you know what? I just saw that picture of I'm putting it all in. I'm putting it all in. This is a good deal. I've won. He has to be our number one. Our life revolves around him. He doesn't revolve around our life. It just doesn't work. The promises of God and the things he has for us, we have to be all in. And it's safe. It's safe. And Mary chose this. She saw this. Yes, everything's screaming at me. Everything's coming my way. I have the busiest, most hectic day. But first, I'm going to sit with Jesus and tell me what he has to say. I'm just going to be with Jesus. I just want to be with Jesus. I can't start my day without being in the presence of God. And every single one of us hears from God. You hear from God. It's not a few select people that hear from God. We were created to hear him. And we all hear him differently. He knows your personality. He knows your situation. And he speaks to you. I mean, the biggest issue in your life, God has the answer for. He does. Not this world. All wisdom and knowledge is in Christ Jesus. He has a supernatural answer. You can find a natural answer. It could be good. But a supernatural answer, wow, it just supersedes what we could do in the natural. And we're smart. We have the Holy Spirit. And, and we can choose. But when we choose to partner with God and hear what he's saying, it's so very powerful. So relationship with God is like any other relationship. You have to be intentional. Good marriages don't happen. Family connection doesn't just happen. You have to be intentional. You, you have to be together. And it's the same with God. It just is not automatic. Like, I'm saved. Okay. No, it's a relationship. He's a person with feelings. Did you know that God has feelings? The Holy Spirit grieves. He sits on his throne and laughs at the enemy. He has emotions. He has feelings. And sometimes he's just waiting and waiting. He's always ready. For us to just come and block everything out and just sit at his feet. Okay, God, what do you want to tell me? Your voice is the most important thing. What do you want to tell me? And it's always good what he wants to tell us. It's always good. We listen to his voice. This creates deep roots. Your time with God creates deep roots. 
jumping from conference to conference, podcast to podcast, great teaching, will not replace your time with God. It doesn't. It's powerful, and I love good teachings. But what God wants to tell you individually will supersede that. Because when you hear the voice of God and hear God speak, it's just more powerful. It's taking out the middleman. You're going directly to the source, and it's life-changing. 1 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Many know of God, few know God. And there's a difference. Martha knew of Jesus. Mary was getting to know Jesus. Why why are we teaching this? Because the church has to stop striving and working so hard. And just in rest, we get to see God move and do more than we can even imagine. Resting in his love, resting in the works of Jesus, resting from the demands of this world. Man, there's so much going on. I homeschool my kids, and we're we're doing a curriculum that we read through the Little House on the Prairie books. I love that. It's like life was so simple. (laughs) Life was so simple in that time, you know, just farm life. There was no social media. There's, you know, nothing pulling on you. You don't know what's going on in a million people's lives all the time. Do you know we're not created for that? We cannot take all that news, whether it's good or bad. That's a lot of information we don't need to know. While our kids are being neglected, our marriage is being neglected. I mean, just the world we're living in just pulls on us all the time. There's so much to do. There's so much to do. And we're missing the most important thing. We get to sit with the creator of the universe. What an honor. Every single day and say, God, what do you say about this? What you doing, God? What are we going to do today, God? What do you want to tell me, God? That's what gets us deeply rooted So no matter what's going on in the world, we're like, oh, I knew that was going to happen, is what God said. He prepares us. The most difficult times in our life, I remember God giving me a dream to prepare it, prepare me for it, and gave me the answer. And so you, you still have disappointments, you still have hurts, but you're not rocked. You're not like, you feel like somebody just came under and cut you under your feet and fall. We're not called to do that. We have a God who knows everything, and he loves us, and he wants to speak to us. Um, We don't have to fear storms. We are not created to fail. It is not in our DNA when we become believers to fail. It's not in our DNA. In Jesus, we are more than conquerors, Romans 8, 37. We don't fear storms. We conquer storms. We don't fear what the enemy tries to scare us with. We laugh. In 1987, um, a group of entrepreneurs and uh, scientists came together. And in Oracle, Arizona, they wanted to create this thing. It was a biosphere. It's called Biosphere 2. This, it was like, does anybody know about this? It was like three um, miles of this just like perfect environment. Okay, so they created this thing. It was the perfect temperature, the perfect soil, like everything's perfect, right, to plant these trees. It was interesting because the trees would only grow to a certain point and die. And they were like, could not understand what was going on. Like everything's perfect. And then they finally realized that it was actually through storms being buffered by winds that these trees grew stronger bark and deeper roots. There was no resistance that they could use. Well, okay. When we have no resistance, we can't even use our faith. We are called to use faith. We're called to be the answer to the problems of the world. But if there's never anything, we never get to use it. And we look at storm, we look at things that the the news is throwing at us, and we're like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? What? We're the answer. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to speak life. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We get to actually use our faith. We take it from here to here, and it comes out. I thought that was fascinating because that's like us. Like, don't be troubled. 
when things come, and I'm not calling for storms. I don't want chaos in the world. I know that some people believe there's a theology that things are going to get better and better and better until Jesus comes. And, and they could be right. My theology is it's not going to. I don't see it in the Bible. I've studied and studied and studied. And it says in the end times, hearts are going to grow cold. What's going on in the world is not judgment from God. I don't believe judgment is going to hit until the church is out. Because, because God, we are not destined for judgment in Christ Jesus. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter what we believe. If it gets better and better or if it gets worse and worse, it doesn't matter. Because either way, if we're rooted in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They can do what they want to do. God, love is free choice. And he wishes none would perish. It's his heart. But people still choose to not believe in God, and it's their choice. And we don't judge them. We love them because that's what love is. We don't scare them into the church. We love them. It's the goodness of God. It's the kindness of God. But I do believe there's birth pains. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen the enemy's hand and what he's trying to do. And I have seen people that seem so close to God and so religious falter when that happened. I was shocked. I, I'm going to be honest. I was shocked. The ones that I thought were so deeply rooted, I saw all the fruit on their tree, got taken out. What does that say? Religion is not the same as relationship. And I'm telling you, church, we've got to get deeply rooted. We've got to throw out the religion, the fear-based relationship with God. I'm not good enough. God doesn't love me. We've got to work on our hearts that we're so deeply rooted that we actually become powerful and do something, even if it's just for our own lives. I'm going to be honest with you. Ben and I and our family thrived during some of the hardest times. It was hard to see things. But we weren't fearful. We trusted God. And I, I want to tell you, I'm working on stuff. That doesn't mean that I'm there. I'm not there. I'm working on stuff. I'm diligent to work on my heart. I refuse to get into religion, even as leaders. It is so easy to read my Bible just to teach you. What I mean is I come to God with an agenda. I learn so I can teach you. Instead of staying childlike, no, I'm in my word because I'm a child of God and I need to learn. And out of the overflow, I can give my congregation. But I'm not going to start getting works and looking perfect. And I mean, I don't mean physically. I mean, like, you know, pretending like everything, I have everything all together. I don't. I'm growing with you. I'm getting my roots deeply rooted. And I see some areas that they're not. And it's the grace of God that shows me that so I can work on it. I want to get so deeply rooted that I'm just not shaken by a mean person. <laughs> by a disappointment. By an expectation not met. Right? What the news says. I'm working on me too. In this world, you will have trouble. John 16, 33, but have peace. I've overcome the world. I mean, I just love that. Yeah, you'll have trouble. I'm not going to just put you in a bubble and pretend like, you know, that biosphere that nothing's happening. You are the answer. I've overcome. Have peace. If you have peace, nothing can shake you. It's when our heart becomes unsettled or in fear is when issues arise. Okay. When our roots go deep in Jesus, we are not relying on this world system to sustain us. It's interesting because in Jeremiah 17, if you go up a few verses, so I read you what the Lord showed me, which was Jeremiah 17, verse 7. But if you go to verse 5, listen to this. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength, who rely on government, 
Okay, it doesn't say that, but that's what it means. Whatever. <laughs> Turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert. With no hope for the future. They will live in barren wilderness with uninhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along the river bank. That means there is always water, there is always resources. It never runs dry. Roots that de reach deep into the water. What is Jesus? The living water. We have living water that wells up inside of us. Holy Spirit lives in us. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. They're not worried about long months of drought. Their leaves stay green. They never stop producing fruit. We were created to know God intimately. We were created to hear God's voice. How, how do we hear God's voice? I mean, there's so many different ways, but I just want to tell you something really practical. The number one way you can hear God's voice, read your Bible. It's like so simple. This is the word of God. It's not a dead word. It's alive. It's living. Sometimes like this thing of go big or go home or, you know, like, I want to do great, grand gestures for God. And God's like, can you just read my word every day and be with me? It's the simple things that get us rooted. It's simple. He, he is not a demanding God. He's very easy. Just be with me. Just reading your word every day will get you deeply rooted every day and being consistent and it's saying this is my priority this is my priority to be with God and to hear his voice it doesn't even have to be very long you know religion is like it has to be so and so hours who says five minutes with God can transform your day Amen. being with God and you say God I'm choosing the better today I'm choosing the better. If you have to write it on your mirror, if you have to put it in your car, I'm choosing the better. I'm making you priority. Would you give me something for today? You will not believe how much God wants to tell you. He has so much to tell you. I mean, he'll tell you things and you will like laugh. He's funny. God's funny. He's going to tell you about a coworker that went through something and you're going to have a word from it. You're going to go up to a coworker and say, hey, are you doing okay? Wah. How do you know I'm not? God loves you. He told me. I mean, that could change somebody's life. But we're so busy, we can't even get a word from the Lord. Just listen to his voice. will change us. will get us deeply rooted. We get so caught up in the busyness of life, we miss the most important thing. Spending time with God will get you deeply rooted. Coming to church is so important, but not the most important thing. It's important. Did you know that redwood trees, this is fascinating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end, but I have to tell you this. Redwood trees, when their roots go deep, they intertwine with each other to help each other stay rooted. This is church family. When somebody's about to fly away in a storm, we grab them and say, no, God has an answer, and we pray for each other. Isn't that powerful? The corporate anointing and coming together pleases God. You can't do, you can't just do it on your own. I'm telling you, I have seen people get hurt by the church. And I'm sorry, I know. I know that there's terrible pastors and leaders. I've heard the stories. And if you have been hurt by a pastor and hurt by a leader, I am sorry. It's not God's heart. I've seen people get hurt by church and it, it, it makes me mad. It makes me mad, the control, the control and the shame that leaders can do. But I'm telling you, I have seen people stop going to church and they're not doing good. They read their Bible, they love God, but there's something missing. It's how God created it. We are a body and we need each other. And there's enough good churches. I know because I have a lot of pastor friends. I would send my people there. 
Well, not my people, but somebody who lived over there. You stay with me. You stay here. <laughs> There's enough good churches. God always wins. God is moving in his church. But there is something about staying, but church cannot replace it. My revelation that God gives me for you will never supersede what God wants to tell you on his own. It just won't. You'll feel so special by God, and he wants to speak to you. Okay, so I'm going to end with this. Mark 6.33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. For everything else will be given to you. These are the two things. Seek God, but you can't seek him on your righteousness. That's religion. A lot of people are seeking God on their own righteousness and trying to earn it. It doesn't work. You seek God with his righteousness. And then everything you need will be supplied to you. It's a promise. And so I don't know where you're at with this. Maybe a little bit of both. I know that I can keep growing deeper in the love of God. Paul prayed this. He said, I pray in Ephesians that you, your, the knowledge of the love of God would go deep, deep in your hearts. He prayed this over and over, that the love of God would go deep, deep in your hearts because he knew if not, they would start getting back into that law, uh, religion, shame, relationship with God. Where you have to work, 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 work. So I don't know if it's that, that you just, deep down, I just don't feel like God really is for me. That's an indicator. He's not really for me. I know he loves me, but not really for me. Then those roots need to go deeper. Or the other one, life got busy. I'm so busy. And, and God became a lesser priority.